Ah, uh, the mall. We're back in my happy place. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Apparently, it's his happy place. Why are you eating? back in his tail. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This morning, we took our photo ID photo. Um, everybody who graduates from Mira with a service dog of any kind gets an ID card. Um, and so we took our photo for that today. He was really funny. He was like not, he was very confused as to what we were doing. I told him he's gonna have to get used to getting his photo taken. So he's gonna have to learn to be a little more posy than he was this morning. Um, but also we're doing something really exciting that he is also gonna have to get used to. We're going to the mall today. I'm very excited. We each got a request. Today's Wednesday, training ends Friday. So yesterday we each got to request one thing we want to make sure to get done before training. And I said escalators because at the airports, malls, lots of places I go, I deal with escalators. And so that's what we're doing today at the mall is practicing escalators and just indoor environments in general. Very exciting. Um, yeah. Uh, I know not all guide dog schools train for escalators, Mira does, which I'm very grateful for because unfortunately, um, sometimes there's like a lack of accessibility and um, elevators can be very hard to find. And because I can't see, the escalators are usually the ones that are like in the obvious places and then the elevators are usually in very convoluted places that are hard to find. Um, so I certainly feel for people who have to use elevators because they can be tricky to get to. So I'm really grateful that we have the option for escalators. And I don't know if this is everywhere, but like say in Los Angeles, the local shopping mall that I would go to, like there was like no stairs. There was one staircase, but everything else was just escalators or very difficult to find elevators. So it would be very inconvenient to have a dog that didn't do escalators. So yeah, that's what we're practicing today. And I'm gonna bring you with me, of course, sorry. There he is. Hey, there he is. <laughs> and apparently, Mr. Benix gets goopy eyes just like Gallup, and none of the other dogs in class do. Can you believe that? I got a goopy eyed dog twice in a row. Here we're seeing some hyperspeed footage of the lovely Mira countryside as they drive into town to go to a mall. Ah, the mall. We're back in my happy place. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Apparently, it's the happy place. Why are you eating? He's back in his tail. <laughs> she looks happy. At the airport, so those two dogs. It's important. We knew that the escalator was was open. Here we're seeing hyperspeed footage of Molly and Benix working some escalators. And once again here we're seeing some more footage of Molly and Benix masterfully working escalators. Going into a grocery store. We just finished doing the escalators and through the mall hallways. Now we're gonna go into, you know, see how they do in a busy store, food around, all that kind of stuff. Now we're seeing some footage of Molly and Benix walking through the grocery store, as Molly just described, with people and food distractions all around. Here we're seeing some footage of Benix being directly confronted with some cheese to work on food refusal, which Molly will explain in just a moment. And here is a little more footage of Molly and Benix walking around the grocery store. 
So another thing we were just working on is food refusal. So when food is near them or almost being given to them that they're supposed to refuse it. Um, so what I did was I just put my hand on his head since I obviously can't see him. So I could feel the direction that his head was in. And that way I could feel if he was looking towards where I knew the food was or if he was turning away and looking at me instead. Um, so what we want is him to turn to look at me as a refusal of that food and to not look at the food. So he was doing very good with this activity. And then also we were working on, I had taken him out to the bathroom and then having him find the door to go back inside. And every time he does that, you, every time they find something that you want them to find, you can give them a treat at the object, at their eye level and say the word again. So they're affirming that the reason they're getting the treat is because they found the thing that they're meant to find to encourage them to continue to find those things. And when we came back from inside, we Without me even asking, he brought me to the very seat that I was sitting in earlier this morning. So that was pretty cool. I was really excited about that. Um, so we're also now just sitting here with food, cheese specifically on the floor in front of him um, to just see how he reacts. So far, this is what he's doing. He's aware, he's very aware that it's there, but he's being very good and just sitting peacefully beside me. Um, at the beginning of the relationship, you're trying to build that bond um, and trying to remind them that they now work for you, not for the trainers. And that's why you're doing lots of treat rewards at the beginning. But as the relationship bonds and forms over the next few weeks, we slowly wind down the treats to the point where treats, uh, treat rewards are at a minimum. Um, that way you're not digging for treats for the rest of your life. He says, I hate this. I hate this test. It's been really good because things like uh, food, I mean, they have to avoid their basic doggy instincts, which is very difficult for them. This is a really good test of their will and strength. And here is a super cute clip of all of the guide dogs sitting patiently back in the Mira van, ready to head back to the Mira campus. Okay, uh, Mr. Bennix is drinking a lot of water. He's a big thirsty boy. He loves his water. Keep that first shiny and hydrated. But I want to show you this. This is something that I've decided to do. I'm not showing you, I'm showing the people at home. I haven't had my mom fill out the rest of the form because obviously address, uh, credit card number, it's all pretty personal. But you can see that I am purchasing five stones for the park at Mira that you saw in the tour video. We are purchasing one for Gallop, one for Gypsy, one for Benix, one for Miss Gigi, the puppy you guys fundraised for. You've also met her in this video and you can see photos of her and her parents over on at Molly's Guide Dogs. And then finally, I purchased the Killer Bee Club one for all of you. Celebrate all my killer bees and all the hard work you guys did fundraising um, and all of the money from these stones is of course a donation to Mira. So I'm pretty excited. We will have officially left our mark on this place. <laughs> And here is a super cute clip of the guide dogs running around the Mira Park. This is a dog on the bed. Again, <laughs> that battle was lost night one, really. Um, I've accepted it. He's a good cuddle buddy. And you know what? He respects me as a handler. He's a great guide, so nothing is lost. But anyways, um, this is the third time that this has happened. I don't know if you see what he's sitting on the bed with. This would be one singular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Here, here, sir. There you go. <laughs> Now, about five days ago, I leave him in, in the bedroom when I go brush my teeth or wash my face or pee or whatever. So I come back and when I walk around the house, I wear my Crocs. Or, sorry, when I'm going like out. <laughs> what? You 
going for my pillow now? Well, he says, if you're back, I don't need the, the uh, slipper. Oh. He did that himself. I did not pull him. Oh. The other day, um, I go out and, like, I have my Crocs and I have my slippers. So my Crocs I wear if I'm, like, taking Benix out to the bathroom, obviously, because I don't want to wear my slippers outside. And then sometimes I'll, like, drop him into the room and then go to the bathroom myself. So my slippers were by my bed. I come back and I bend down and I can only find one slipper. And I'm so confused because this blind girl always puts her stuff in the same place at all times. So I'm like, where on earth is my second slipper? And then I go and I sit on my bed and I find my second slipper with just the tiniest bit of slobber right at the back. And he's just sitting with it. And I was like, are you kidding me? This is the third time it's happened where I come in because the second time was yesterday. And immediately when I only found one slipper, I knew to look next to him. He was on his bed this time, sitting with my slipper. Again, no no slobber, he's not chewing it. He just simply grabs it and puts it next to him. So then tonight, I come back from doing my like night routine, brushing, flossing, blah, blah, blah. And this is sitting with him again. And like, again, just sitting, the, there's no slobber on it at all. I feel like. No. He actually, there's nothing. I don't no. even, I'm literally like, how did you get it up here? There's no slobber on it. I don't know why he's doing it. If you're an animal psychologist, comment and let me know. The only things I can think is either A, he's trying to be silly and play a little prank on me, or B, when I'm out of the room, he wants comfort that smells like me, so he grabs my soft slipper. I, I don't know. I think that's know. what he says. I don't know. It's very silly. Is very funny. He's exhausted today. He is absolutely exhausted. He had such a good time. We did more recall at the park with all the dogs this time. So all six dogs were running around together. And Benix was so funny because I didn't even call him and he just came wandering back over and laid down next to me like, okay, they can all keep playing. I'm done, mummy. I want to be with you. And he also at another time when I did the recall and I shook the harness, he literally came running, boom, directly into the harness. He didn't run to me. He ran right into his harness. It was, a top speed. It was so funny. So he had a great day. Lots of, uh, lots of stuff happening today. We did dog distractions. We did food distractions. We did escalators. We did free leash play or like, free, yeah, like free no leash play with recall. Like he, he, he did a lot today and they tried to do these like obstacle courses. They didn't tell us we were doing it. It was a, you know, find out in the moment where they were running dogs around us and they set up like random pylons on the sidewalks and they parked a car across it and they put peanut butter sandwiches on it. So we literally went from the park where they just all played, so they're exhausted. And then they're guiding us back and unbeknownst to us, we're running into all of this shenanigans. And I told Gala, oh my God, I keep calling him Gala accidentally <laughs> <laughs> all the time. I told. I mean, Gallup 2.0. I told Benix, I'll give you guys the clean version, but I told him, they're trying to F with you. Don't let them F with you. And he said, no, mommy. <laughs> okay, good night. We need to get this guy asleep. Huh? And I'm taking my slipper back. Oh. <laughs> He's like, tummy rub, please, mommy, tummy rub. Hello, I'm here with Matthew. He is an O&M or orientation and mobility instructor. And here at Mira with every single class, we have trainers as well as an O&M instructor, which I think is incredibly helpful and useful. And I have tapped into his brain and knowledge a few times in this class. Yeah. <laughs> we actually um, did my Gallup training together. And I apologize for being a hot mess express. <laughs> Um, so currently in class we have six blind handlers and then we have three guide dog trainers and Matthew the O&M instructor so it's four sighted people to six blind folk. The class we're in right now all of us are closer to being fully blind because at Mira they separate the classes into clients who are more close to fully blind and then a class separate for clients who are closer to having a bit more remaining vision just because training can be a little bit different. But what I want to talk about with you is what you see as an O&M instructor might be the benefits to a guide dog, but more importantly than that, who you think a guide dog is the best fit for um, and where you think O&M plays a role in that. I think if you want a dog, a guide dog, it's really, really important that you improve your auditory skills, kinesthetic skills, and if you have a little of vision, your visual skills too. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really important. So that's why the ONM doing course or ONM, it's really important. And 
if it's better to have a guide dog or a cane, it's different for different people. And some people would like more to have a cane because at going home, you can just put your cane down and it's done. But when you have a dog, you have to, to do a lot of responsibility. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's a multitask mm -hmm. when you have a dog because you have to know where you are, you, uh, you know, to be safe when you cross streets. Paying attention to what you feel in your harness and also listening to the traffic flow. Yeah. So you're kind of like paying attention to two things. And make sure you're, you're going the right direction. Yeah. I feel like with the cane, you're getting more tactile feedback. Like the only tactile feedback you get as a guide dog user is the pull in a harness and what's under your feet, like what you can feel with your feet. But you re that's why it's so important to tap into the auditory skills and kind of more spatial awareness because that becomes more important. Yeah, it's a totally different uh, training. Yeah. With your cane, you touch everything, you touch the holes, touch the, the obstacles, but with your dog, you just go across. You don't even know if there's an obstacle, but you, you feel that your dog is going around, and that's really, really different. And going around an obstacles, and you can go away from your traffic. And if you don't, if you don't listen to the traffic, you'll go away. Lose with your it. space. Exactly. Yeah. I also think there's a bit of a misconception in the blind community that if you if you aren't good at using a cane, you should just get a guide dog. Or if you don't want to use a cane, you don't have to, just go get a guide dog. And I don't think that that is correct. I don't think that that's fair to say. I think if you want to get a guide dog, you have to get really good at using your cane. You have to be extra good at, at your O&M and I think that the guide dog is an alternative to the cane, but it's not a this or that. It's not, I don't want to pick up a cane, so I'm just going to go get a guide dog. It's, I need to use my cane so that I can go get a guide dog. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and it's part of the training. Before having a guide dog, we train people with the cane, just to make sure they're comfortable going around. And after that, if they want a guide dog, we're gonna train them with the different type of, of situation and different, different, uh, sorry, different kind of uh, training, mm -hmm. using their hearing uh, abilities and kinesthetic abilities. There you go, guys. Got to use your cane before you can yeah. get a guide dog. Take your O and M classes. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Where is it? Oh, he wants to touch you. Oh, you want to hold my paw? Well, we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I want to introduce you to somebody very special. This is Karen Winter. Karen has been a long time Mira trainer. How long have you been here? Uh, officially, I started in 1992, but I've been working oh with uh, Eric St. Pierre since uh, 1989. And I started my career in 1985. Where did you start your career? Uh, Lions Foundation, and then uh, the two schools affiliated at one point. And when they separated, uh, I followed Eric. I liked his uh, training philosophies, the breeding mm -hmm. program, and the breeding lots of program lots of other uh, trainers to help me out because I was young then. <laughs> so I learned a lot here, a lot. Well, and um, why I want to introduce Karen is because she's the one who brought Gallup into all of our lives. So we're very grateful. Karen is actually currently training with the mobility dogs, so she's not in the guide dog program. But she was in the guide dog program at the time that I came seven years ago. And she helped pick Gallup for me and convinced me that he was the right dog, which he absolutely totally was. And yeah, shocking. That was tough. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I have since apologized for being a basket case, um, but she brought Gallup into my life, which was such a wonderful match, and I feel like the way Karen trained me and the lessons that she taught me made me be open for Mr. Bennix here, so I feel like I just have to say thank you, and I know everybody else is very grateful that you brought Gallup into my life. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. You're welcome. It's the final night, and we're all having a nice glass of wine to toast the class. We're all just drinking our wine, celebrating the class, and um, we're all just feeling each other's dogs, because we've spent two weeks with each other's dogs and hearing about each other's dogs and we have never touched each other's dogs so we like took our dogs off our and we are petting each other's dogs and then our dogs were getting jealous and like jumping on each other it's so funny <laughs>
Karen taught me a lot. Karen so gave me many valuable lessons, lesson. some hard hey, lessons uh, no, that I needed uh, because I was a basket case and I apologize for how difficult I was and I know I was, but you made me better this time. So Ian had a less difficult client to deal with. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. You made me a better person, Karen. You made me a better guide dog handler. And I appreciate it because I needed it and I feel like Benelux has the best chance because of how you trained me. So I remember when you lost your sunglasses in the washroom and I'm there. I don't see them anywhere. I can't find them. Where did the sound come from when they fell? Where'd you hear the sound? Well, it sounded close to the vanity. So I'm down there on all four, <laughs> on all fours, right under the lip of the vanity. I found them, and you're like, Karen, you rock. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. It was team, it's really teamwork, really. Oh, yeah. I'll take a little bit of credit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You told me where to look. <laughs> and I did. And you and did I the got. eyes. You did the eyes. Yep. You understood what I needed beyond a guide dog. Yes. You understood yes. what I as a person needed emotionally. And it was Gallup. And he was the perfect dog. And how he could give that to you and help you through that. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I see that in Benelux. I see that he has what I need for the next phase of my life. Yeah. You know, he, he has that calmness and that stability of gallop. And he has a little bit of sass, like just, and I feel like I'm ready for that dog. And I know the next dog, whenever that comes, is going to be the right dog for that phase of my life. <laughs> I'm telling Ian, he needs to promise me that you will always call that dog statue Benny Lux. Okay, for sure. He must be Benny Lux. Promise. So I'm gonna introduce Benny Lux to Benny Lux. Oh, here he is. <laughs> Doesn't it look like him, Mom? And he's now in the Mira Bandana. Yeah. This is Benix. Meet the Benelux. Do you see it just looks just like you know what? Their snouts are the same size. They are. Like it really is. Very, very like I Benelux. thought when I got it that it looked like Gala. No, it's even more Benelux. It is. Alright, you guys. It's the final day. I've got Mr. Benix here on my foot. You know, because it was two weeks and not three, there's things we didn't get to do that we usually do, like doing subways. Um doing uh, the big city, like downtown Montreal, doing kind of areas blocked by construction, different things like that. But I will be getting follow-up next week, so this is not the end of the training videos. A few more to come, don't you worry. But um, I fly home, so today's Friday. This morning I signed my Mira contract, making Benix officially my dog. Um, I have a meeting in a few minutes with the trainers to just go over how the two weeks went, any advice they have for me, feedback, things that I should think of or focus on, that kind of thing. Then this afternoon, a volunteer is taking us back to the same hotel, because we loved it, the Vogue Hotel um, in downtown Montreal. We will be staying there Friday night and Saturday night. After you bring your puppy home, they really, really, really recommend that you don't do anything. You just pet your dog, play with your dog, groom your dog, cuddle your dog, take it to pee, but like no harness work or very minimal harness work because they just want your dog to have time to process, to relax, to rest, and same with you. And so tomorrow we will just be sleeping and cuddling all day. And then we fly home on Sunday, which of course I'll be taking you on that journey. It's crazy, like if it was, if I was able to stay for another week, I would, but at the same time, I feel ready to go. Like. This time has flown by and it's felt shockingly easy and smooth and so I really do feel ready to go home with him and on Monday evening uh, I'll be meeting with Nico St. Pierre, uh, the founder Eric St. Pierre's son who now runs the school. He will be coming out to do at least three full days of follow-up so with him we'll do you know the big city, we'll do the subway, We'll do construction, we'll do some of the things we missed. Um, regardless of how long your training is, whether you come for a month, 
three weeks or even just the two weeks which um, shouldn't be happening again. I think this was just a one-time COVID situation. I think all their other classes will go back to being three weeks or four weeks for first-time handlers. But regardless of how long your class is, they always send a trainer the week you get home to do follow-up to help you transition the dog. If there's any issues with them coming home, anything like that, they they help you. So yeah, that's, that's what's next for us on the journey. <sighs> I'm ready to bring baby away home. He looks like he's ready to go home with you. He says, this is my mummy. This is, this is my mummy. I love my mummy. Coming up in the next episode. I'm just taking his harness off. I'm going to feed him his dinner before we get on the flight. It is actually his dinner time.